has become a significant cultural, religious, and commercial celebration of romance and love in many regions of the world. So as we know, as we see when we go to the stores, they start putting out Valentine's Day stuff really early. And, yeah. and then after Valentine's Day is over, it's all reduced. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you know, we all, it's a time of the year that we always think about love. I remember, broken mind, a Bob Jones, I don't know if any of you have heard of him, but it was, he had one of those experiences where he died and went to be with the Lord, and, uh, but he was revived and brought back. But he said, and when he stood before the Lord, the Lord only asked him one question. The Lord asked him, did you learn to love? That was the only thing the Lord said to him, did you learn to love? Mm. And then he was revived and came back, and the Lord allowed him to finally come home. It was, it, it's funny, uh, on Valentine's Day 2016, he finally went to be with the Lord, permanently. Yeah. So that's kind of unique that that yeah. would happen. But anyway, if you got your Bibles, you can follow along with me. And I'm going to start with uh, John chapter 3. Amen. Very familiar passions, I'm sure. But with God, it's all about love. And we're going to see, like I said, we could spend a whole month just talking about love, just what the Word of God says about love. But John chapter 3, I'm going to read verses 16 through 17. It says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. You imagine that God so loved the world that He sent His Son. And that, that's a lot of love. And we're going to find out it begins with love and it's going to end with love. Amen. Because the bridegroom He's coming back for his bride that he loves. That's right. And we don't know what of God says. No man knows the day and hour, only the Father only. And I tell people, I'm at the point now to tell people, get right with God and stay right with God. Because by death or the rapture, we're all leaving about out of here. I thought about my right. wife's brother. Bless his heart. This is her oldest brother. He made it all the way to... December 31st. And he crossed over and went on to be with the Lord. He didn't get to see 2023. And none of us know when we're going to draw our last breath on this earth. Well, that's why I always tell people just get right with God and stay right with God. 
and be ready. Amen. Hey, turn with me to 1 John. 1 John chapter 4. I'm going to read quickly verses 7 through 11. It says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Amen. I'm going to stop right there for a minute. It says, He that loveth not knoweth not God. He's saying that if we don't love, we don't know God. I don't know about you, but I want to know God. I want to love people. And it doesn't matter to me. I, I've learned over the years, according to the Word of God, that to just love people. Red, yellow, white, black, brown, doesn't matter. Just love people. Mm -hmm. Love them unconditionally. It doesn't matter. Rich, poor, young, old, just love people. The Lord told me something a long time ago and he's brought it back to my remembrance here just at the end of last year. He said, son, just keep loving me and loving people and everything else will be all right. Amen. And that's, that's the bottom line. Amen. Amen. I'm going to move on. And verse 9 says, And this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Where it is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a perpetuation of, for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Amen. Amen. That we all love one another. And since we're in 1 John, let's go to 1 John chapter 4. I'm going to read verses 14 through 19. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Here it is our, our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love, for we love him because he first loved us. Amen. We love God because he first loved us. And I don't think that we yet fully comprehend how much he loves us. And in our fallen, sinful state, that he sent his son Jesus to die for us. That we can't imagine that all of our sins have been wiped out because of the precious blood of Jesus. They've been washed away. Forgiven. We are forgiven. That we can come boldly before a holy God because our sins are now forgiven. Because of what Jesus did. It blows my little mind, I can tell you that. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Turn me to Romans chapter 5. Verse 5, it says, Hope make it not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. God has shed His love abroad in our hearts by His Holy Spirit. So what does that say? It says to me that we have no excuse not to love, because we've got God's love in us by His Holy Spirit. Amen. So if we're not loving, we're making a choice not to love. Amen? Amen. So it's a choice that we make every day to reach out to people in love. And I know it's not always easy. You know, we have people that talk about us, put us down. We've all experienced that. But if we're truly of God, we're going to love them anyway. And I look at it like this. That the Lord can pay from that cross on Calvary. And none of those words, forgive them, Father. For they know not what they do. If he can hang from the cross after all that was done to him and say, forgive them. The little bit that I go through on this earth, I can love them. I can love them, no matter what. Hard, hard, hard. <laughs> Romans 5, 8 says, but God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It goes back to what I just was talking about then. Christ died for us. While we were sinners, he laid down his life for us. 
He loved us that much that He who knew no sin became sin for us that you and I might be made the righteousness of God. We stand righteous before a holy God because of what Jesus did. Because the Word of God says our righteousness is as filthy rags before God. But it's only because of what Jesus did. Amen. Turn me to the book of John, if you will, chapter 13. I'm going to read verses 34 through 35. It says, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Jesus said that's going to be something that shows people that we're his disciples. The love we have for one another. And it's so sad, as I've just observed over the years, how we as the body of Christ don't love one another. There's so much division, the racial, the nominational lines. We're fussing and fighting among ourselves about this and that. When our Lord said they will know that you're my disciples by the love you have for one another. So we have a challenge to love one another while we still have time. Because I don't want to stand before the Lord one day and if he asked me that question that he asked Bob Jones, did you learn to love? Mark chapter 12, I'm going to read verses 30 through 31. It says, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Amen. And the second is like namely this. Thou shalt love thy neighbors and love thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. So the Lord gave us two commandments that sum up everything. He said we are to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And I think many times that I've been there myself over the years, that we have to learn to love ourselves. Many battle with that. You see so many people, even with young people, they struggle with just loving themselves. But the Lord left us with those two commandments. And it seems very simple. To just love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. But that's what we've got to get back to. Just that basics of just loving God and loving people. With that agape love. That unconditional love. That we just love people. All people. Yes. And that's a challenge. As we see in this world that we live in now. We don't see a whole lot of love being demonstrated Instead, we see a whole lot of hatred. Amen. But, again, that's something that sets us apart from the world. They, they will know that we are the Lord's disciples by the love we have for one another. So, in closing, I'd like to just say this. It says, the key to understanding this and the other statements about love is to know that this love, that agape love, and unconditional love is not so much a matter of emotion as it is of doing things for the benefit of another person. That is having an unselfish concern for another and a willingness to seek the best for another. And isn't that what our Lord did for us? He, he willfully laid down his life for us. And then he rose on the third day. And the word of God says he's seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. Amen. And then one day, in the twinkling of an eye, he's coming back. And I don't know about anybody else, but I'm going to be ready. Because I'm looking up. Because our redemption is drawing nigh. Yeah. Watch. Again, I say watch. Amen. Mm -hmm. So I will say this. Again, I want to thank Brother David for inviting me to come and share a word this morning. And remember, God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen.